L'année 2015 a vraiment été riche en succès. Tesla continue son développement. Elle continue également en France, puisque nous avons ouvert l'année dernière de nouvelles implantations à Bordeaux, Lyon, Chambourcy et Aix-en-Provence. Nous avons livré il y a quelques semaines de cela la millième Model S et notre réseau de superchargeurs continue de s'étendre et comporte dès aujourd'hui 29 stations et 144 bornes de recharge en France. Vous le savez, et j'ai plaisir à le rappeler à chacun de nos événements, nous construisons cette aventure avec vous et sans vous, nous n'en serions pas que. Tesla is successful as well, is successful at all uh, is because of people like you. Um, <laughs> exactly. um, so, um, you know, uh, you know, Tesla gets a lot of attention in the press and everything, but uh, as you guys know, we're a small company. Uh, we made 50,000 cars last year. That's 0.5% as many cars as, say, Toyota, General Motors, or VW. Um, and, um, Yeah, so, so we're really, the reason we are able to make progress um, and keep growing is um, with the support of people like you. So you guys are really integral to making it happen. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my Thank you. That is my mic. Oh, again, that's better. Yes. Yes, much better. Few words in French. <laughs> well, in, in high school, I mean, I, um, I've always been a big fan of France, actually. Um, the, <laughs> because it's great. Um, but um, in high school, you have to pick a, a foreign language. Um, in that case, South Africa, where I was growing up, and my choice was French. Yeah. So uh, uh, high school French, which comes back to me slowly, um, but uh, you know, it's usually being able to say things like "mon crayon et Jean," "mon père qui est un Spanish." True, I do. Um, and um, actually, France was France was the first place I ever visited, visited outside of South Africa. Um, my father brought me here when I was six years old. So I've loved Paris for a long time. <laughs> probably, this is probably my 50th, 50th trip. So, yeah, so it's been, been a while. Um, and um, yeah, so um, like I said, th th thanks for all your support. Um, I, I can give you sort of a general update on the company um, and, and kind of where things are headed. Um, and then I'd love to just hear, uh, get into a dialogue, you know, just back and forth. Uh, Hit me with questions, uh, whatever questions you have in your mind, um, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability with, without hopefully creating some silly news headline. Um, yeah, because it does have quite a lot. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so where we are right now. Microphone. Okay, all right. Um, so we've got the up Um, in, in production at about a thousand units a week, um, and we're trying to ramp up the Model X to roughly a comparable number of a thousand units a week. Um, and uh, hopefully, we should be at that at that production level around well, close to maybe sometime in Q2 of this year. So, for those of you who have a Model X on order, uh, I've expected <laughs> you may be wondering where's my car coming. Um, I think it's probably this summer. Is the most likely outcome. So, yeah, so I think the model, the model X, uh, I, I, the model X is uh, much better. Is this better? Yeah. Much better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. The, 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 I, I'm not sure that anyone should have built or designed this car um, because it's so difficult to make. 
Um, but I, I think um, for those of you who do get it, you're, you're really going to love it. It's, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's something special. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, the, the, the honest answer is I think the, the X is a better SUV than the S is a sedan. Yeah, so it, it's, it's quite remarkable. It, it, I don't know if you've seen, if you saw the Model X demo, we drove two cars really close together, and you can open the Valkyrie doors, no problem. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. It was just a question of, you know, how tall. If you feel Samsung, it's perfect. I've seen the French parking lots. One meter ninety. Yeah. Um, but then it's, it, it's designed to work in very tight spots. So I think, I think it should work pretty well. And then, of course, there's the summon and unsummon capability. So if you don't want to park the car yourself, you can basically... Have it park yourself. You can just have the car park. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and I'll get bogged down in the little questions, but... Um, the, let's see. Um, so, anyway, um, just going over the, the, the big picture. Uh, Model X production, in, in terms of significant deliveries uh, this summer uh, in, uh, in, in Europe, uh, then the Model 3 is uh, under development. I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out. Uh, we're we're, uh, we're going to constrain the, the number of new features in the Model 3. Um, compared to say the X, in order to avoid repeating the same mistake. So we'll have, you know, with each successive year, we'll introduce more things into the Model 3 as opposed to trying to pile it all in in one year. Uh, we're trying to stay, stay as close as possible to our end 2017 start of production. Um, but based on where we are now, I feel really good about the Model 3. I think it's, I think people are going to love that car. Um, and then the other, another big push is uh, towards uh, autonomy, um, just making the autopilot features more and more capable. And it, the micro, micro, micro. Oh, sorry. So making the, uh, the, the autopilot features uh, more and more capable. Um, I'm not sure how many, people have, how many people here have used autopilot? All the time. Okay, great, great. Um, and um, yeah, so. Did you notice improvements going to 7.1? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, so I think the, even with the, the current hardware suite, I think we'll see significant improvements to the autopilot. Basically, what it'll be capable of doing is near perfect uh, control on freeways, even where there's no cars, um, and um, near perfect control in any traffic situation where it's tracking a vehicle. So that's. Um, yeah, maybe a different one. Uh, Hello? Better. Um, yeah, so that's going to get better. Uh, one of the things we're also working on is the mapping solution. Okay. Uh, and my, if, if I seem a little ragged, by the way, it's like I literally had one hour of sleep in the, uh, the last 48 hours. Um, so. Sorry. Here we go. Um, so the the the, 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 the I think that result is um, you know basically in about two years we should have Model Three plus full autonomy. Yeah, which is really quite transformative. So three will have our five. What do you mean by yes. all people testing? Yeah. It doesn't work so well in the country. <laughs> It, it's, it's the current water pilot does not work on windy roads in the countryside. <laughs> what do you mean by full autonomy? Yeah, full autonomy, yes. Uh, no human intervention required. Okay. More than the human intervention optional. Um, like probably two years, worst case, three years. That, that's the difference. Uh, Regulatory approval is, is a separate track. But in terms of if it being technologically done, it's in the two to, year, two to three year time frame. Um, and then uh, we've got the, te the Tesla Powerwall and Powerpack. Um, sure, I, I, we have a lot of trials underway right now around the world. 
um, seeing very good results, um, and then we're expecting to come out with a version two of the boot. You gotta keep it close. Okay. Feels like I'm ready. Feels like I'm gonna eat the mic. Um, the the um, well, we're coming out with version two of the Powerwall probably around uh, July, August this, this year, which will see a further step change in capabilities. Um, yeah, at a high level, that's kind of where, where things are. Um, I'm happy to answer questions sort of in rapid fire succession. Well, let me first start with any other questions. Yeah. Hello. You want to meet me? Thank you, Elan. We are really honored to have you there. Uh, we have owners from all across France, as you can see, and I'm sure most of them would like to ask you a few questions. I have team members uh, in the room uh, with some microphones, so I'm just going to call the team members with the microphones because you are uh, lots of people tonight. So if we can start with Maeva, please, for the first question. Uh, and let me, take, let me anticipate at least what one of the questions will be is when will, will there be supercharger co coverage completely around France? Yeah. Um, no, that, that is stated for no later than June. Um, so by, by June of this year, you should be able to travel anywhere in France, anywhere within France, and really any, almost anywhere in uh, Western Europe uh, using the Tesla supercharger network. Great. Thank you. The island of Napoleon. The island of Napoleon. Come on. When? <laughs> Sorry. Napoleon. Small island. Next time. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> so it's over there. He's going. Uh, Good evening. First of all, thanks for having us and for sharing your vision. Uh, my question is about uh, mirroring of a smartphone in the car. You talked about yes. that a while ago. Uh, and then you talked about it again a few days ago. Yes. So could you elaborate a bit on your vision on that and when can we expect to have it? <laughs> so, I think sometime later this year, like maybe middle of this year, uh, is when I would... It, it, so when, when can we have forward mirroring on the screen? I think around the middle of this year. Um, it's harder than it seems. Like the, the, the interfaces to the iPhone and Android are not as good as as we'd like. Um, they can project a screen, but not, a, not they're not so good at projecting a touch interface as well. Um, so you'll be able to see it, but not touch it. Um, but um, but I, I do think that's the, the logical way to go, because otherwise, to expect an app, app developer community to develop for a few hundred thousand customers is like when there's hundreds of millions on iPhone and Android is online just not going to happen. Do you think it's going to be okay? Um, yeah, I do think that the honest answer is that the dramatic drop in oil prices will have some negative effect on electric vehicle sales of, of all types. I think it'll, it'll have this, the smallest effect on Tesla because we have like a highly differentiated product, um, whereas what, say, Nissan and Chevy do is they, they have an electric product that's pretty hard to tell the difference between the electric and the gasoline or petrol product. So uh, if the economics don't favor the um, electric in that case, and the product and there's no product differentiation, they're unlikely to buy the electric. When will we see pictures of Model 3? Uh, the first pictures of Model 3 will be end of March. Yeah, but I'm being a little coy here. We're not going to show everything about Model 3 until a lot closer to production time. Can you give us some details? No. <laughs> 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 Elon? Elon? 
I got three three questions. So welcome in France. We got a saying in France: "Impossible is not French." So three impossible question to you. One, first question: When the supercharger will be accessible to every car manufacturer? Will you open the access of supercharger to other car manufacturer? First question. Second question, everybody in France know Gilbert Passin and Jérôme Guilain. We are yeah. very proud of them. Yeah, very proud right. of them. When, what will be the key factor for you to, to create an R&D and design center in France? And why not a factory such as Fremont in France? So three impossible questions. Sorry, sorry unfortunately I was adjusting my mic, so I missed a second. So, so um, just, yeah, just say that again. First, supercharger yeah. open to every yes. factory. So, supercharger open to everyone. This is something that we stated publicly. The, 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 goal, the goal of the Tesla supercharger system is definitely not to create some special walled garden or to uh, have a sort of a competitive edge against other companies. You know, the velocity of Tesla is, I think, is, is very consistent. We want to do anything we can to help the advent of sustainable transport. So our, our network is open to any other manufacturers that want to use it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, and we will be adding the, the European standard plug as well. So they don't have to have a Tesla ad adapter. So we'll have a mixture of Tesla adapters and and, and the EU standard plug. I, I don't love the plug honestly. I went to the EU commissioner myself and said like this plug is enormous and does not look good. Um, okay. This could not change the So mind. the two question. Our, our French question is what, what will be, or convince you what the key factors of the policy of Tesla Motors to create a second R&D and design center here in France because we have very good engineer. A sure. second, we got a huge factory in north of Paris, in the center of the, of the Europe. Why not produce car in France? I have heard you want to produce car in Germany, in Holland. <laughs> what are the problems sure. in your mind about France? Uh, Why not produce in France? Sure. So I, let me just speak in general terms because let me tell you what happens is you know I, I engage in sort of okay. uh, the, uh, why, why not put a factory in France? Yes. Okay. Um, so um, well, right now we only have one factory. So yes. then uh, the question is, where do we put our next factories for expansion? The the logical thing to do, um, and uh, you know, th this is. I, I don't think any, any new information I'm saying, there'll probably still be some new newspaper headline about it. Um, <laughs> the obvious thing to do is to establish a factory in China um, and a factory in Europe. Um, now we have a sort of smallish factory in the Netherlands, um, but to do large scale manufacturing, like on the order of a million units a year type of factory, um, we'll need a much bigger uh, area of land, access to uh, a large uh, employee base, um, and um, I don't know. Try to try to make as many make as many countries in Europe happy as possible. So, like, this is idle speculation, but it's like, well, maybe we could put it put a factory on like in Alsace, and you know, it's like half. Germany and half in France or something like that. Okay. Um, oh, so. This is not a prediction. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's just sort of yeah, spitballing here. So, it, but, but, but the bottom line is, it, it, it totally it makes total sense to to like. It, it, I mean, there's an incredible talent pool of of production uh, expertise and engineering expertise and design expertise in Europe mm -hmm. uh, in automotive. Um, actually, I think it's a it's a deeper and richer pool than in the United States. So. so so why not? So we, we are going to do it. Thank you. Impossible yeah. is not French. Come to France. No, 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 we're definitely, definitely going to have uh, both uh, engineering and production in Europe long term. It's just a question of when. So and how? Yeah, how and the details and whatnot. Um, but uh, I think it's a natural thing. It, it's crazy to make tons of cars in California and ship them all the way over to you yes. to Europe. But yeah. like. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank Question you. Question on upside. upside. Thank you very much. To improve the charging time to show when there's charging time? Yeah, so charging time is limited by a number of variables. Um, 
the, the there's the cell chemistry, there's the internal wiring of the car, and then there's the actual power output of the supercharger. Um, so the, when the, the first superchargers that we started out with were 90 kilowatt hour, then we went to 120 kilowatt hour, and now they're 135. And I think I think we'll probably see them going towards maybe 100 to and 80 to 200. Um, but what, what tends to happen with battery chemistry is that, is, is that you exponent micro. So it's like transmitting from the bottom. Is that better? Okay. Um, German microphone. Volkswagen <laughs> <laughs> microphone. I should have just gone with the lapel mic. Um, yeah, so, so um, the, the cell chemistry gets um, incrementally harder. Like it, it almost becomes exponential as you decrease the charge time. Um, you, like the way to think of it is like that you have these little lithium ions looking for a parking spot. That's basically what's happening. And so they're like zooming around and looking for a parking spot. But when, when, the, when the battery is empty, it's easy to find a spot. And as the battery gets full, there's fewer and fewer spots. But if you keep jamming them in real hard, then they smash into each other and have accidents. <laughs> basically what happens. Um, so, so the like going from say a 20 minute charge time to a 15 minute charge time is, is actually a huge difference. Um, so I, I, and I think we'll, be, we'll really be aiming for charge times that are in the 15 to 20 minute time frame, but with enough range that you know, you'd be driving for four hours or something like that before you need to stop for 15, 20 minutes. Which I think is like, you know, you want, unless you're torturing yourself, you really want to get out of the car after four hours. Yeah. Is it possible to use the battery as a power wall? Sorry, the what? Do you think it's possible to use the battery as a power wall? Oh, yeah, so... Um, you, you certainly could, in principle, turn your car into a kind of an emergency power source for your house. Uh, <clears throat> the very early prototype versions of Roadster actually did, did allow that capability. Um, what we found though was that it, it created quite a lot of complexity on the house side, and if you didn't know when the car was going to be pumping energy into the house, uh, it could be dangerous for electricians and potentially pump too much energy. Um, it, it, it really wasn't designed for uh, being a backup power source. It, it, and then of course, if somebody wants to drive the car, then all the lights would go out in the house. So I think the right, component, the right thing to do is actually have stationary battery packs in conjunction with um, electric car. So, what, what can we expect in terms of range for the, the Model S, for example, within two years? And, uh, two years. I mean, for the Model S existing now, are you how able much, How much range do you want? <laughs> <laughs> One size of the That's a serious question. How much range do you want? 700 kilometers. Yeah. 800. 800. 800 kilometers. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Optional battery pack. Extra battery pack. Ready to play. Yeah, the, the challenge is like, if you, the, as you have a bigger and bigger battery pack, then when you're not doing a long distance trip, you're hauling around all that mass for no reason. So, so we want to find a happy medium between uh, what you really need for convenience of recharging and for doing long distance trips, but not have so much battery capacity that it's almost never used. Um, but I mean, we've toyed around with certain ideas, like for example, having a trailer uh, with an auxiliary battery pack, like, um, like like a little camper trailer with an auxiliary battery pack. Rooftop. Yeah, something like that might work. Um, but um, I, I think just naturally expanding the the, the one less um, battery pack size. <coughs> and once you start getting up above 500 kilometers, 550. I mean, it's really 
Do you need more than that? Well, that's pretty unlikely. So you, you can't expect to see steady increases in, in battery capacity over time. Did you think about putting a, a solar pa panel uh, on the top of the of the roof in order to recharge the, the, the car better? Yeah, we, we, we thought about the solar panels on the roof. The, 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 the actual area of the roof mm -hmm. um, would, would really be quite a small amount. Um, so it would take a long time to recharge the car um, if, you, if you just had solar panels on the roof. But it would help to go further. Uh, no, no would not. Okay. No, it's the. If, if you look at the square, you, you say like, what is the um, area, mm -hmm. and and then how much direct sunlight does the car get? So as we park outside yeah. in a non-shaded situation, um, and then you might get two to three square meters, um, which would be maybe six hundred watts of charging at peak time. So nothing. Yeah. Let's see. Um, <laughs> So, so some in Europe. Um, uh, whereas in the U.S., we can pretty much like roll out some, um, and as long as it's, it's not done on public property, it's, it's, there's no it could, it could be done. In, in Europe, even if it's a private property, it requires explicit approval from the regulators. So we, we're working with um, RDW, which is a, the main regulatory agency we work with, um, and to define the precise. Uh, limitations of some and that they will find acceptable. Um, currently, the way that the law is written, or the regulations are written, some isn't technically allowed. Um, so we we've got to figure out ways to um, meet the, the the intent of the regulations. So I, I just one way of saying I think some will roll out in about two or three weeks. But that's that, that time frame is not within our control. It's up to the regulators. Uh, I know you're a great interpreter, and uh, uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, we do appreciate the fact that we invite you to speak here. Uh, it's, it's amazing what you do. Uh, we are interpreters as well. We are with the here, um, and we work for a startup, and we uh, are just talking about SpaceX. I'm oh, sorry, and we would love you to invite us in your panel to the world. So if you can do that. You would be the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're yeah. All right, well, it, it, anyone that's interested in seeing a rocket launch, it, it's actually pretty easy to see. There will actually there will be a lot of rocket launches this year. Uh, sorry? Yeah, hopefully. Um, the, Anyone, you don't need any permission from SpaceX or anything, just look at the SpaceX website um, and head there whenever you want. The best best place to look at it is on the causeways at Cape Canaveral. Uh, just, yeah. Yeah, we, oh, I see, yeah, no, we can't, we, you can't come in the mission control room. <laughs> no. Even within SpaceX, it's very limited. Okay. Maybe maybe three three more questions. Yeah. And not about I'm not answering SpaceX questions. <laughs> Personal question is: You're so much afraid of uh, artificial intelligence that you can't sleep at night, or um, say that somewhere, or it's more just a warning about the. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, I have had occasional sleepless nights worrying about. Artificial intelligence, but most of the time, if I have a sleepless night, it's because of work-related stress. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I just think we need to be careful about artificial intelligence and not assume it's going to be good. You know, um, one can certainly envision futures where it's good, but also ones where it is not. Um, so really, it's just about being cautious and not, not assuming too much. First one. Are you running away? Okay. <laughs> Last one. Yes. Hello, please. You may. Shh. Do they must wait to find the supervisor or not? Impossible. It's not French. Oh, Mars. The supervisor on Mars. Um, I hope we have superchargers on Mars. That class problem. Um, all right, Tesla-related questions. Uh, I'll, I'll, 
three more, and then uh, we, we, we have some time. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 And please, I, I, I ask a question you think that really people, a lot of people want to know about. You, you, met, have, you, met, with our, you met with our Ministry of Finance yeah. like yesterday or today. I'm sure he asked you for pieces of advice. Anything you could share with us <laughs> on what you told him? Yeah, um, <laughs> fair enough. Um, like I said, actually, I think he's a very smart guy. and. Very well read, the beautiful. Um, like, I would say one of the best politicians I've met anywhere. Um, yeah, so this is for Macron, the, the finance minister. What, what, what did I have to say to uh, the finance minister when I met with him today? Um, so I think, first of all, I, I think he's a really, I was very impressed. He's a really smart, well read guy, um, and um, really cares about uh, about France like a lot. Um, so, the, I mean, we, we talked about the, the fact that um, uh, there's effectively, <coughs> every gasoline car it, it, it is subsidized by the fact that it, it is not paying for the carbon dioxide and sulfur oxide and nitrous oxide pollution that it creates. So, every gasoline car is effectively subsidized by the public good. Um, so then, one of the two things need to ha need to happen, because the fundamentally the, the role of government is that of rule maker, of regular. They're the they're the referee and the, and, the, and the, they set the rules of the game. Um, so um, the the best thing would be to put a tax on carbon, and everyone in the economics industry profession, I think, who has read about the subject would agree that a carbon tax is a sensible thing to do. Um, or if you can't get that, then to, to match the subsidy that gasoline cars get, match that on electric cars. Uh, otherwise, it's a very uneven playing field. Um, he seems to take that to heart, from what I can tell. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. He was also very keen to understand where exactly Tesla might be placing a factory. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and if, if there were any obstacles to establishing a factory in in France, you know, um, so um, yeah, You're make I, I gave him some kind of feedback, but I, I, I don't. I, that was that's part of a private conversation. Oh, sure. One question: <laughs> when, when, Can you can you comment Apple's strategy on uh, EV? No. And, uh, What's your view on when, Apple coming in? I, 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 because you're, you've been the first one, we know that somebody else is going to come in. How is it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think it's great that Apple's doing yeah. an electric car. Um, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of electronics expertise. I think it will be a while before they can bring something to market because they they're used to outsourcing production, mm -hmm. and there is no good way to outsource production to improve for, for cars. And what about for a day future? Um, you think it's Apple? Yeah. No, uh, Faraday Future is not Apple. <laughs> um, in, in the US, there are four China funded EV startups um, at the billion dollar plus level. So it's Faraday, Ativa, Next EV, and uh, uh, Karma, formerly called Fisco. Um, so it's definitely quite a uh, lot of competition. Um, but, but I, would, I mean, I, would, I focus a lot on like, you know, what a competitor is doing. Really, what do we need to do to make our cars as compelling as possible? Um, so uh, that, that's really what matters. Uh, if we make great cars that people love, then things will be fine. And if other car companies make great cars that people love, they'll be fine too. Mr. Alan, to come back on Tesla, would uh, you redesign Model S like uh, front design of Model X? No. One comment on future anything like that. All right. Yeah, yeah, sorry, and, 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 and I'll, the, the, the very last question, and then I'm going to go. Yeah, the car, the voice control doesn't work. This is unless we speak with American accent. Oh, seriously? <laughs> no, Good question. Oh, okay. That, no, that's very fixable. I didn't realize that was an issue. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, voice, being able to issue voice commands in French. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's probably something we can fix fairly quickly. I'll, I'll take note of that and talk to the team next week. <laughs> <laughs>